protests have lasted nearly a year. Intense and sometimes heated clashes with authorities. All to prevent a pipeline from being built next to the Standing Rock Sioux Tribe sacred land, which they say could also pollute their source of drinking water. After setting fires and blocking the bridge in the path of the pipeline, months of tension have escalated. Some promise a fight to the end. There's no fear here. We know that we have the moral high ground and that we're, we're doing what's right. Protesters want a big 11th hour victory from the Obama administration yesterday that prevents the completion of the Dakota Access Pipeline. The Army Corps of Engineers now has hit the pause button on the Dakota Access Pipeline. Is there any indication that the policy could change after the inauguration of Donald Trump? Well, certainly, that's the, this was, in essence, driven in large part by pressure brought to bear on the Obama administration and them asking the Army Corps to take a second look at this. I'm pleased to announce that the Dakota Access Pipeline, which I just mentioned, is now officially open for business. Demonstrators have been protesting at what they call Standing Rock, that tribal ground, for months now. A $3.8 billion investment in American infrastructure that was stalled. And nobody thought any politician would have the guts to approve that final leg. And I just closed my eyes and said, Here. So what the Obama administration has done, the Trump administration could undo. And, and Trump has been very clear from the get-go, he wants this pipeline to be built. But back on January 24th, President Trump signed the executive order to kick off the resumption of the controversial pipeline, which President Obama had halted before he left office. Of course, impact on the sacred land, but an unlikely group has rushed to their aid. U.S. military veterans of all stripes have shown up to Standing Rock, North Dakota to jump into the fight between the tribes and the company spearheading the pipeline, Energy Transfer Partners, ETP. The CEO is breaking his silence as he faces mounting threats and lengthening delays. Thousands of demonstrators in North Dakota have been camped out near several pipeline construction sites, which at times have turned violent and led to over 400 arrests. One of the biggest industries in the world is the oil industry, which makes billions of dollars every year. Many pipelines are built across the United States to try and transport this oil to American consumers. Of course, to many groups of people, this is a controversial thing, but the most controversial pipeline to come out of recent history is the Dakota Access Pipeline. The pipeline was built by the company Energy Transfer Partners to safely move the crude Bakken oil in the north to American consumers. but. Some don't think that this is a safe way. The pipeline ended up being built under the Standing Rock Sioux Reservation of North Dakota, which of course has caused the reservation to protest against it, sometimes violently. The violence has escalated so much that the Obama administration ended up cutting the project altogether. After the Obama administration decided to put this conflict to a close, our Supreme Leader Lord Tr excuse me, President Trump, decided, nah, eh, I'm good, and the conflict resumed. How, is this conflict going to end? How long will it go on for? Is there a solution to reach? The Sioux people's main problem with the pipeline is its effect that it would have on the environment there. The oil would leak into the water supply, contaminating it and destroying the sacred land that the Sioux live on and contaminating their water. While the pipeline was built by Energy Transfer Partners, the permits for the building of the pipe was given to and approved by the United States Army Corps of Engineers. The United States Army Corps of Engineers are responsible for the permits and permissions for many projects across the United States, such as the Dakota Pipeline. They have reported to many news sources that the pipeline is safe and effective at the job it was built for. The CEO of ETP has, of course, been through a lot of fire because of the whole pipeline situation. Even with these allegations, though, they didn't seem that they're going to be changing their mind in the very least anytime soon. So, with all that in mind, and all the conflicts that have risen up because of it, a solution doesn't really seem possible to this, does it? Well, while it might seem like that at first, a solution is in fact possible. 
While pipelines are proven to be the safest way to transport oil across country, they aren't the only proven way of transport. Trains. Granted, they put more greenhouse gases in the air, which is another environmental problem, but who's really going to argue against trains, am I, am I right, guys? Besides, we have all this land on the railroads to go across. <laughs> I mean, there's no stopping. I mean, okay, yeah, I, I can't do this anymore. That, that's not a real good solution at all, is it? No, I didn't think so at first either. Good thing I came up with one that was way better than that. The Dakota Pipeline stays in production while you build an alternative route for it. That way you don't lose any money and the economy stays afloat on your oil. The Sioux people would only have to deal with the pipeline a little longer rather than forever. ETP can get the media off their back, and all the Army Corps of Engineers has to do is approve for some new permits. Once the new route is built, the old one can be taken out of the Sioux land, and they can be happy. And we can leave all of this in the past. Oh, misty eye of the mountain below Keep careful watch of my brother's souls And should the sky be filled with fire and smoke Keep watching over during sun This is to end in fire And we shall all burn together Watch the flames climb high Into the night Calling out Father